This is the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 1. And it reads, And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses of sins, wherein in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But the Most High, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with the Mashiach, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places, and a Mashiach Yahweh Shai, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Shalom, Shalom. I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rechakwadash. I want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations to you, elect Akim, across the four winds of this earth. Pushing this word in sincerity and in truth. I'm the brother Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas camp. Coming at you all with another lesson through the spirit. Lord willing, it's edifying. A few days ago, I had watched a lesson that Elder Yashawamba had done entitled um, The Heavenly Family. I believe, I'm sorry, a family reunion. It was um, within it was in within that matter. All right, it was touching upon that point. And when he listened to his lesson, he was pretty much just touching up on how we're all a family that already existed or coexisted in the heavens alongside with Yahweh Shai. And through the mercy of Yahweh Bashin Yahweh Shai, we have all been brought back together in these heavenly places that the Apostle Paul had mentioned in Ephesians, the second chapter, in the sixth verse, where it said, He had made us to sit together in heavenly places in Yahweh Shai Mashiach. And that's what's being done ultimately through the Spirit. Okay? Now, through the Spirit, I started this lesson here at Ephesians, the second chapter, because um, it touches up on how we were all dead at a point of time through sin, through trespasses. OK, and really, when you look according to the law, all right, according to the law, we're all supposed to be dead. We're all supposed to be cast out of the congregation. We aren't supposed to have anything to do with the most High, But through the mercy and through the grace and the faith that was already spoken of even before. All right. Through prophecy, we were all to be brought back together here within these latter days, which is where we're at right now. OK, so it doesn't matter the things that you've done in the past, things that you might have committed before you woke up to the truth. We all were according or we all had our number according to the children of wrath at a period of time. OK, and the heavenly father had woke us up, wiped us clean. All right. And called us all together here to be this one family. OK, as we're here in the earth, but we're ultimately that family in the heavens and the heavenly father had already ordained us to be as such. OK, we were already preordained to walk this particular walk that we are sojourning right now. We have already been preordained for you, brothers that are the prophets. OK, we are already preordained to be prophets for you all that are helps and aids and believers. You were already preordained to be a believer. And this is something that was already established since we've came from the womb. OK, that's why it makes sense when the Apostle Paul made the statement in Philippians, the third chapter, not looking back at those things. Matter of fact, I'll read it. Let's see here. This is Philippians, chapter three, verse um, let me see here. I mean, really, the whole chapter is heat. But just for time's sake, I'm going to start at the point. This is Philippians chapter three, verse 12. It says, not as though I had already attained either were already perfect, but I follow after it that I may apprehend it. That for which also I am apprehended of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. And when you go on to apprehend it, it means to have attained. All right. And what have we attained? The Holy Spirit, the gift that was given of the Most High. 
But the thing about it is, it isn't of our own will that we've walked and attained this. Okay, but we've already had this apprehended, all right, since birth, if we are of the elect. And it's ultimately something that was given from the Heavenly Father. Grace was given from the Heavenly Father. Mercy was given from the Heavenly Father. Faith was given from Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, the Heavenly Father. All right, and we were able to attain these things through his son Yahweh Shai, who was the first to resurrect from the dead. All right, the firstborn of many brethren, as the scriptures say. But I'm going to continue to read this here. It says, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. OK, so if you constantly focus on and harp on the things that you've done before, there's going to be no way for you to grow. All right. And to continue to live forward as a man of the Lord. If you focus on the things that are behind you, how can you see the things that are before you or presented in front of you, which is the kingdom of heaven. The understanding that mercy was given unto his elect. Grace was given unto us to the point where the things that we've done back before are null and void because we've been quickened together with Yahweh Shai. OK, and that leads me to the topic at hand, which all of it is a topic. But I mentioned earlier going to how we were already set up and ordained from the womb. All right. Now, notice when we woke up in the sin, when we were born into sin. We've committed sin all of our lives, but the Lord still washed us off and set us aside and consecrated us to be the image of his son. OK, to be an image of his son. And that's and that's the type of thing that makes you want to continue to move forward. All right. Knowing that you are a piece of excuse my friends, but a piece of shit in the world or you've been washed off and cleaned. That within itself should make you want to press forward and continue to press forward toward the mark. Because he didn't have to wash us off. He didn't have to wake us up. He didn't have to make us in the image of his son, but he had chose to. And again, as I keep saying it, and I'm going to say it again, he had chose us this, but it was already established even before the foundations of the earth. OK, so I'm going to read this here in the book of Jeremiah, the first chapter. And I'm going to start at the top. It says the words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah. Of the priests that were in Ananoth and Salak and Antha and Anathoth in the land of Benjamin. All right, and um, that was actually um, a heavy role Jeremiah had because he was a, a prophet, which was very heavy, and also too, he was the son of Hilkiah, the high priest. Okay, and if you don't know who Hilkiah is, when you actually read about him in the second Kings, the 22nd chapter, all right, when the temple was being reconsecrated, okay, because um, around that time Josiah was king. OK, and his father, all right, who was in power before him, pretty much was he was a wicked guy. All right. There was periods of time where they were offering up um, sacrifices to idols in the temple. OK, you read it in Ezekiel, the eighth chapter, I believe it's in chapter eight or nine. It talks about the image of jealousy that sat within the temple. OK, so around this time here, when the temple was being reconsecrated, Hilkiah, who was the father of Jeremiah and Shaphan, all right, who were priests, they were reordaining the temple and they found the book of the law. All right. And when they read the book of the law to Josiah, Josiah lamented and mourned because he read about the judgments that was going to befall upon Israel within the latter days, how they were going to go into captivity, how they were going to be scattered among the nations. OK, and that's one of many reasons not to harp on the law. Of course, we understand that we don't make void the law. OK, but the law isn't the foundation of what we teach, because if you have the law as your foundation, you threw. All right. That's why we were casted down before. Why I read Ephesians, the second chapter, because according to the law, we were numbered among the children of disobedience because we weren't able to keep the whole law. OK, that's why we have grace and we have faith. OK, but Jeremiah was the son of this high priest that had found the book of the law. And that was a huge deal. OK, but I'm going to continue here in Jeremiah one and two. It says to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the 13th year of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the end of the 11th year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, and this is the point, 
Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet to the nations. OK, now Jeremiah was a young man. All right. Matter of fact, here in verse six, it says, then said I, ah, Lord, Yahweh, behold, I cannot speak for I am a child. OK, so we don't really know the exact age that Jeremiah was when the word of the Lord came unto him. All right. But one thing we do know is he was a child. He was a young man. But the Lord had clearly told him that before he even came out of the womb, he was already mm -hmm. set up and ordained to be a prophet. So it was already set up and ordained for Jeremiah to walk the walk that he had. Now, the reason why I wanted to pull this precept out, because just as that applies with Jeremiah, that applies to every one of us. It don't matter the things that we've done before. It don't matter the, the crimes according to the law, the offenses according to the law that we've done before we woke up to the truth. Those things don't matter. That things that's null and void. It's washed away. All right. The Lord has set you up to be somebody special. He set you up to be a leader of the nation of Israel. OK, talking to the prophets that are out here. OK, and hey, when it comes to you aids and you believers, he has set you all up to be leaders to a degree as well. All right. Because even within you believe in this testimony, that's accounted toward your righteousness as pertaining to Romans, the fourth chapter. All right. Which means that you have a heavy gift or a heavy portion that the Lord has given unto you. And the beautiful thing about it is it was already set up and ordained before we were even in the womb. OK. And again, that's what I'm going to tackle on this lesson. Before we even knew what we were going to be, the Lord had already had us set up to be what we are right now. OK. The gospel that we have right now, the Lord had already set it up when he had created us in the womb of our mother to be such. That's why your mother conceived you of the Holy Spirit, just like our Lord Yahweh Shai, just like John the Baptist. All right. Your mother is actually special to a degree because she carried you. OK, you were formed in the womb by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. The spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai had formed you in the womb of your mother and made you a very significant pivotal piece. All right. As pertaining to salvation and the word being distributed among all four corners of the earth. And that's huge. OK, that's huge. And we're all together standing up here in these last days, joined together within these heavenly places as we were ordained to be here within these last days. OK, this is the book of Galatians, chapter one, verse uh, 15. It says, but when it pleased the most high who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. Now, when you go into this word separated here. That word there in the Greek. Strong's G 873. Afarizo. Afarizo. And when you go into this, it says to mark off from others by boundaries, to limit, to separate. Let's see, to appoint, to set apart for some purpose. OK, so what's the Apostle Paul saying here in Galatians? All right. It says, but when it pleased the most high who separated me from my mother's womb or it means to set apart or to appoint. All right. For his purpose, it says, and call me by his grace. Now, what was his purpose? What was he separated for from his mother's womb? What was his read earlier in Jeremiah one and five that he was ordained to be a prophet from his mother's womb, to be a prophet unto the nations. Right. What does the apostle Paul say? Verse 16. This is what he was appointed to do to reveal his son in me. OK. And that's the same thing with us. Our main purpose, our main job is to reveal Yahweh Shai and Yahweh Shai is being revealed in us. That's why I said earlier, we are made in the image of his son. OK, our walk, our way, how we live is supposed to mimic or reflect the image of the heavenly father's son, who is Yahweh Shai. And this is our purpose. This is what we live for. OK, it says to reveal his son in me. That I might preach him among the heathen. And this is the same thing that it was told Jeremiah. Was it not written that Jeremiah was a prophet unto the nations? When you go into the heathen, that means the nations. Okay. And when you even go into this, because a lot of people will read this 
And they'll use this scripture to prove that Paul was sent to preach to everybody. OK, which when we go on the highways and we preach, everybody's walking by listening. All right. But what are we doing? We're calling out that way. Those that hear will receive this word. Those Israelites that were scattered. You remember when you go according to the curses, when you go according to the prophecies, we were scattered throughout all the four corners of the nations. We were scattered among the heathen, as is read in Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. All right. And prophecy said that we were going to be gathered and we were going to be fetched from among the heathen. So as Paul was an apostle of the Gentiles, Paul's job was to preach. All right. Was to display the image of Yahweh Shai was to call out that way. Those that were scattered among the heathen would be brought back according to prophecy as prophecy had stated. OK, so it says to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen immediately. I confer not with flesh and blood. OK, so he was sent or appointed to preach among the heathen and display and reveal the son of man. Yeah, was shy in him. And this is no different than us. This is our main job. This is our main objective. OK, and how do we do that? How do we do that? We preach the gospel. We preach faith. All right. We prophesy. That's why it's written in Revelation 19. It says the testimony of Yahweh Shai or this who was the son. All right. Is the spirit of prophecy. That's why it was written in Jeremiah one. He had ordained him from the womb to be a prophet. That's why it's written in Galatians. Paul was ordained from the womb to be a prophet among the heat to prophesy among the heathen. OK, and the same thing applies with us. When you really understand the totality of these scriptures, Old Testament and New Testament, it unfolds a very dynamic story that only those appointed to understand will understand. And we get it. We get it. This is a family reunion. We are joining back together. All right. And we are sitting in the seat that we had. Or I should say we're preparing to sit in the seats that we had all the way from the beginning with our Lord, Yahweh Shai. If we are those spirits that were with Yahweh Shai from the beginning, Lord's willing, we are. But the elect were those spirits from the beginning. All right. And the elect were already set and established from the womb. All right. To carry forth this legacy. All right. That was already established from the beginning. That was already something that was in the womb. It was already set that we were going to go off in the flesh. It was already set that there was a falling away that had to take place first. But now we're back here within this stead. All right. We're back within this calling as we were called before. OK. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 49, verse one. And it says, listen, O isles unto me and hearken ye people from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb. From the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. Now, why is Isaiah telling the people from far to listen? All right. Because there was a point of time where we were far off from the commonwealth. OK, we were far off from the commonwealth. But through hearing this word, we were quick and we were made alive. OK, when you read this here in Isaiah 49 and one, this is no different than reading Jeremiah one and five. This is no different than reading Galatians one. Because there Jeremiah was told to prophesy among the nations. OK. Paul was told to prophesy among the nations. What does that mean? He was prophesying to them that were afar. OK. We were told to prophesy to people from far among the nations, just as we were from far off when we heard this word. All right. As we heard this word, I believe the precept that I'm thinking of is in um. Isaiah 28, where it says, thine eyes shall see thy teachers behind thee, and they shall say, Here, here's the way, walk ye in it. That was taught to us when we were afar, and we turned around and took heed to that voice. Okay? It says, the Lord hath called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name, and he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand hath he hid me, and made me a polished shaft. And his quiver hath he hid me. And he said unto me, thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. OK, so our job here 
It's to display, all right, to display the Son of Man, Yahweh Shai, through us. In doing that, we are glorifying Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. And that's our main existence. We're here to glorify the Father and the Son. And that is a duty, that is an honor that we've been given that the bulk of civilization do not have. They have not acquired that. But this is something that was given unto us. We've been called from the womb to do what we're doing, brothers. And that's heavy. That's huge, man. We've been called from the womb to understand, from the womb, Salakia, to understand these mysteries that were written within these scriptures that have been hidden from all ages and revealed unto us this day. And take hold of that, man. Take hold of that. That's something heavy. Okay? And I'm going to end it off here on this lesson. I didn't intend on it to be too long anyway. Just wanted to touch up on, you know, how we play a significant role here today. All right. And the things that we've done in the past don't matter. We've already been set up and established from the womb really before that. All right. But here in this earth, when we came out of our mother's womb. The most High already had this job that we're doing already set in stone. All right. We just had to wait for that appointed time, which is the time that we are in right now. OK, but I'm going to end it off here. In the book of uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And I'm going to start at verse 13. And it says, but we are bound to give thanks always to the Most High for you. And that's something that we got to constantly do. Just give thanks. Give thanks because we could be in a worse state. All right. Give thanks whatever you're going through because we could already be taken. All right. Just giving thanks that we've been given or granted this opportunity. All right. To glorify the Son. Okay. It says, but we are bound to give thanks always to the Most High for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because the Most High hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. All right. Just as it was written in Jeremiah 1 and 5, before you were born, when you was in your mother's womb, I had ordained thee and sanctified thee to be a prophet among the nation. We were chosen to salvation. We were Created and formed in our mother's womb, all right, to be those vessels to receive salvation, to be those vessels, all right, to be resurrected from the dead as our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai was. Okay? We are literally little images of Yahweh Shai walking, preaching about him. Okay? We are for signs and wonders. It says, Whereunto he called you by our gospel. To the obtaining of the glory of our Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. And that's something that's heavy, man. To be called from the beginning to salvation. That's something heavy, man. And that's something, man, that's something so heavy that it should make you and encourage you to continue to push forward. All right? Because you're an image of his son. You're preaching about his son and doing that. Doing that is a sign that we are those that were ultimately sent, set up to be saved. Okay. So Lord's willing, this lesson made sense. I didn't intend on this to be too long, but um, I was just meditating on those scriptures. Um, stumbled across some of them as I was doing some reading, you know, but uh, we play a very pivotal piece in what's taking place, man. So don't fret. Don't worry about the things that's going to befall upon this place, especially if you are already set up and chosen from the foundations of the earth. You good. Okay. You've been doing a mighty work on the planet earth. The heavenly father has set you up to do a mighty work. All right. So he ain't going to put you with the number of the wicked man. All right. Evil is for the wicked. Salvation and righteousness is for the elect. All right. Those that believe. Those that were set up since they were born. Okay. Shalom.